In this video, we're going to set up hosting with Flywheel. Flywheel is a great choice for WordPress hosting because they take care of all of the nitty gritty details of hosting and keeping your WordPress website running. So you can just focus on what's important and that is building your site. In this video, I'll show you how to properly set up and configure WordPress so that your site will be off to the best start possible. It's really important to have WordPress configured properly, so you're not going to want to miss this section. To make sure that we're on the same page, use the sponsored link below this video to sign up for Flywheel. If there's any special deals or promotions, I'll be sure to include those below also. Using the sponsored link costs you nothing extra, it might actually even save you money, and it provides me with compensation so that I can provide this free tutorial series. So let's take the first step in building our website by signing up for hosting and configuring WordPress. All right, so to get started with Flywheel, you can either use the sign up button at the top or you can click the create a free website. Then just go ahead and fill out your information on the new account page. And so now I've got the first step done, which is signing up. So once you've signed up for Flywheel, you'll be taken to this page here, which is your dashboard. If for some reason you're not taken to this page, you can just click on the link up here for the dashboard. And as you can see, um, with Flywheel, uh, compared to other hosting companies, there's not like a lot of buttons you can press or things you can choose from. It's just a really streamlined experience. And that's because Flywheel is taking care of all of the things that your website needs in the background so you don't have to worry about it. And you can focus on what you need to do, which is build your website. So to get started uh, building a new site with Flywheel, you simply just click on this new site button up here. And then you give your site a name. And then you want to create a admin or username. It's important uh, that your username or admin name here isn't the same name as your company name. Um, and it's not, you don't want it to be a common name because this is definitely a place where hackers can easily get in uh, and start attacking your website. So you don't want to make it like admin, for example. You want to make it something else. And then you want to have a good, robust password. I'm going to use LastPass to generate a password for me. And then I'm just going to paste that robust password in here. And if you're setting this up as a temporary domain, so it's not live on your main domain, since I don't have a domain link to this yet. And since Flywheel doesn't have its own domain or registrar built into it, actually all sites are going to need to start out with a temporary domain. And then later on, you can link that to your final domain. So I'm just going to go ahead and add one in there. And then you've got a choice here whether you want to pay now. So if you're just like ready to just dive in and um, you're committed to making your website, which is definitely what you should be doing if you're watching this video. But if you're not and you're building, say, a website for a client or you just want to see how all of this works, you can actually um, start for free just by clicking on this My Client Will Pay Later button. And then you go ahead and, and then down here at the bottom, you can just click launch demo site. So you've got two options, pay now, which is going to fully activate your hosting, or pay later, which is going to give you a limited amount of time to create a demo site. So I'm going to go with the uh, pay later here, since this is a site just to show you guys how all of this works. And you click on launch one, launch a demo site down here. And right now, Flywheel's setting up WordPress. They're setting up this temporary domain for you. And it just takes a few minutes. Just be a little bit patient and let them sort of do the work in the background for you. I made a previous site with Flywheel, and I did have to do a verification process in order to be able to make that. So you, if you have a verification window that pops up, just know that you just got to go through that verification step so that you can go ahead and start making your website. Okay, so here we go. Now, um, so I've got 14 days on this trial, uh, and the site is password protected. And so that means that basically nobody else but me or somebody who I've given the password to, and you'll find the password right down here to access the site. So if you want to show it to your client, you give them uh, this password information here so they can see what the site looks like that you're working on for them. And this just makes sure that you're, you know, you're not trying to use this free service to actually launch a full and complete site. And you wouldn't want to do that anyways um, because you really, to have ownership over your site, you really want to be using your own domain name. So not a, you know, not, your, not a name that you've chosen and then flywheelsites.com. That's not really going to help you with your search engine optimization. It's not going to help you further your business or your mission. So you really want to have your own domain name to start out with. But this is a great way if you're building a site for a client or just to sort of try things out and see how it works or to get your site sort of to a level of readiness before you launch it live. And so right now, um, I'm set up here as a collaborator. If I wanted to add another collaborator, all I've got to do is just ask them to sign up for a free Flywheel account. And then you can just click here and then type in either their username or their email address. And then you can just add a second administrator to your site, which has all the access to work on your website right there. So it's really an awesome feature of Flywheel and it makes this so easy because with other hosting companies, 
it's just believe me, it's very difficult. There's you know you need to set up an FTP password, you need to set up all sorts of passwords and settings. Um, and usually the easiest way to do it is just give them access to all to your login, and you don't really want to do that just for your own security. And um, when you're finished with the relationship of them helping you build your website, you want to be able to easily remove them from the access uh, to your site. And then we've got some other settings up here uh, that are part of Flywheel. So we've got the statistics uh, of our website, so how many visits, um, and you know the current billing cycle, and of course you can change the dates as the time goes on. We get different add-ons. Um, SSL support is something that's going to be insanely important uh, in the future for your search engine optimization. So when you have your final domain, you're either gonna wanna turn on SSL support here or at the domain registrar. And a content de delivery network, um, if your site, if you're trying to reach people worldwide, what a content delivery network does is it has a copy of your website in different servers around the world so that no matter where people are viewing your website, they've got a server that's closer to them so that your site will load faster. And multi-network is something that's not very typical and probably most people watching this video won't need to do. You've got access to your backups here, so your site's uh, backed up every day with Flywheel, and then you can download a backup, or you can revert to a previous backup. And then these are some um, advanced settings, which probably most of you won't need to worry about. The one thing is um, flush cache. So if you've made a change to your website and it doesn't seem to be reflecting, if you flush the cache, that will just sort of update everything on the web so that you can see any changes that you made. Generally, when you make changes, uh, you shouldn't have to worry about this, but if for some reason you've made a change and you know you've made the change and you can't see it, you might want to come over here and push the flush cache button. And then, of course, billing will handle your billing. So then to start working on this site, all we've got to do is just click on this WordPress login over here. Enter in the username and password that they've provided us down here. And then we're taken to our WordPress login right here, and we can go ahead and log into our site. Okay, so now we're here on the back end. So this is the sort of control panel for WordPress, and where we're going to be managing our website is right here. And I'm just going to go through the basic settings that you need to set to get WordPress up and running correctly and make sure that all of your settings are set up correctly. It's really important. There's just a few things that we need to do here, but it's, these are actually some really important things to make sure that are set up properly. So the first thing, let's just check the plugins. And a lot of uh, other hosting companies have extra plugins here, but um, keeping your life simple, which is what sort of Flywheel's mission is, uh, they don't have anything extra, so you can just start loading the things that you need. And later on, we'll be loading a theme, and we're going to do that here. WordPress does come with some default themes, which are very basic themes. Don't find them terribly useful unless you want the exact look. But in the next video, I'm going to show you how to install a theme. I'm going to give you a great recommendation for a theme that I really like. So the first setting that we want to do is we just want to go over here to Settings General. So you can either just click on Settings, or you can click on Settings General. And then we just want to change this tagline to reflect our business. This is not something that generally shows up, but it might show up, um, and it might be part of your search engine optimization. So you might just want to include like the name of your business or a very brief couple word statement about what your business is all about. So something like that. You want to make sure that your email address is correct. So any messages about your website um, from WordPress or from your word from your website basically will go to that email address. You want to make sure you don't change this um, unless you're changing the URL of your website. So don't touch this because if you touch this, you won't be able to access your website. And you can say that this. You can see here, Flywheel's made this easy um, by saying that this field is managed by the settings in your flywheel dashboard on some other hosting companies it's not and if you touch this and you adjust this you won't be able to access your site without ftping in and changing the code of your website and then another really important thing about wordpress is um, pretty much with themes and with wordpress itself you always want to make sure you scroll down to the bottom or find where the save button is after you've made a change and click save otherwise you won't save your changes and the next thing we want to do is we want to go down here to permalinks. And this is a super important setting to change um, because it's going to affect the search engine optimization. So basically how easy it is for search engines to find the content that's on your website. And what I recommend is going down here to the one that says post name. And what this is going to do is give what they call a pretty link to all of the pages and posts that you create on your website. So here's an example. So if you had 
named your post or your page sample post, it would put in this URL for your website. So it'd be your website name slash sample dash post. And that's a lot better than having um, what the default is, which is this question mark P equals one, two, three, which isn't telling your users anything. It's not really friendly. It's not easy to convey that information. And it's not something that search engines can use to figure out what your page or post is about. Whereas if you have it set to post name, it's going to show sample post or whatever the name is of your page or post. And that's going to help search engines understand what your page is about. And then of course, be sure to click save changes at the bottom. Okay, so then the one last thing we want to do is just we want to go up here to our posts and pages, and we're just going to remove any of the default posts that have already been added. And this is something that WordPress does just to show you, hey, this is a post, we've already added one. But I'm going to show you how to add your own post and build your own post in WordPress uh, in the next video. So go ahead and just click on that, and you can just click on trash. I'm just going to put this into the trash folder. Later on, you can empty your trash if you want to, but this is going to sort of just clean that out from our website. We can go over here to pages. Um, we're just going to remove the sample page here. And if you wanted to add another user to your website, so if you get somebody who you want to help write articles or manage your website, you can do that here. To add a new user, you just go to users. You can either click add new down here or add new. Uh, create a username for them. An email address. I can't use uh, my real website hints address, so... Just add that, which is a total fake address. I'm sure somebody had somebody's address out there somewhere. And then you give them with a name. And autocorrect is being awesome up here. I'm pretty sure username has to be one word. And then you can put in their website. That's optional. And you can choose what role you want that person to have. So if they're a subscriber, they're basically going to not be able to do anything but maybe add comments uh, to the posts. You can do contributor author, editor, and these all, um, so starting from the lowest amount of control up to the highest amount of control here. And you can read about that on the WordPress website. Well, basically, administrator, they'll be able to do everything. Author will be able to write posts, but I don't believe that they can publish them. And then the editor has to, you know, of course, can edit posts or pages and then also publish those pages. And then to add a new user, you just click add new. I'm not going to do that here because I don't want any other users on my web page and I don't want to sort of add just extra junk to my site. Um, and I think it's a really important thing just about WordPress and building websites in general is that you want to sort of be zen about it and have the minimum amount of things. You want the minimum amount of plugins, um, the minimum amount of just you know extra users on your site. You want to just keep everything as clean and neat as possible without any excess. You just want to try to remove excess because any excess is just potential for things to go wrong. But there you go. That's it. We've now set up WordPress and we're ready to take the next step, which is to install a theme um, and then start building our website. If you want to just go ahead and click on the next video, I'm going to show you one of my favorite themes that I think is a great theme for anyone to start out with. I'm going to show you how to install a WordPress theme.